Hey everybody, welcome to another quick tutorial. My name is Umair from NextGen Cam. Today we're going to take a look at how to use the Threadmill feature on Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so what I've done here is just created a quick, simple test block. And on this test block, I've used Fusion's hole command to go ahead and create some of these tapped holes. Uh, I put on some of those cosmetic threads in there just to indicate that those are tapped. Um, I've also created them in three different uh, diameters. So ranging from a quarter inch to three eighths and going from left to right, I made them from coarse to fine uh, so that we can try to do a couple of different uh, thread uh, pitches uh, on the same diameter. So before I even go ahead and create this operation, it's important to make sure that we have the right tool for the operation. In order to do that, I've gone ahead and picked a tool from the Harvey Tools website. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that really quick. Let me go ahead and bring that up on the screen. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just taken you to the Harvey website. Uh, I'm looking at the thread milling cutters here in single form. I typically like to use the single flutes just because then I can get more uh, use out of it by being able to mill any pitch that I want. Um, so that's why I like using the single flutes. So if we were to go down here and just check on this list, there is a couple of diameter ranges. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with this particular size right here. So we can start off with a quarter inch and as you can see there's a couple of different ranges on how much length we can get uh, uh, for our threads. So depending on how much stick out we actually need. Uh, I can go ahead and th I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select this right here, the quarter inch thread size, but it's giving me a three quarter inch max depth of thread. So I can simply also, if I want to, just download the model too. Uh, just as a quick tip, uh, Fusion 360 now has the capability to download Harvey's um, tool, libra uh, tool library to, to Fusion 360 directly. So if you're ever interested in that, uh, it's pretty easy to have that set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this tool and I'm going to take you over back into Fusion and we'll take a look at how we can model that tool in there. All right, so just by quickly downloading that tool model to Fusion 360, we can take a look at what that tool actually looks like. Now, there's a couple ways to do this, and I'm sure you know, you'll find different ways uh, on how to do this, but you don't actually need to you know, download the tool or anything like that. You can simply also just create the tool in Fusion 360's tool library. But if you ever wanted to create the form tool uh, to get a more accurate uh, depiction of the tool, you could also do it that way. So just keep in mind, there's a couple of options on how you can do it. To, for today, what I'm actually going to do is I think it'd be fun to show you guys how I would use this if I wanted to bring it in as a form tool uh, instead of using Fusion 360's uh, regular um, tool library to, to create a thread mill. Let's go ahead and actually use the form mill option to bring in the most accurate model of that particular cutter. So right here is the 2D sketch line of the pro side profile of our cutter. As you can see, it's kind of uh, drawn with just half the axis. I haven't revolved it yet, but for what we're trying to do, we don't actually need to revolve it in any way. Uh, we're actually gonna use Fusion's form tool uh, option to create the tool just from this sketch line, okay? So let's go back, jump into our manufacturing section here. Okay, so notice that it just kind of drops your uh, sketch from the space we brought in from the design area. So what I can actually do here is I can go ahead and say under manage, I can say form mill, and then I can select the tool profile and I can go ahead and select the tool axis right here on the center. And my compensation point is actually gonna be right here on the side of the tool, furthest out, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now we won't actually see the tool being created for us, but we will see this in our tool library. So I'm going to go ahead and walk us through the entire setup for our part. All right, so I think we're going to go ahead and 
set our part up, our block. So I'm going to do a quick setup here. Um, I'm going to keep everything pretty simple the way it is. What I'm going to probably do is for my stock, I am going to go with maybe doing something like fix a relative size box, but I can just have it all set to zero here or just do no additional stock because I'm not too worried about cutting around this. I'm just going to pop our holes in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. So there's a setup ready to go. Uh, very quick, simple setup. Didn't really change much in there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in my drilling operations here because I need to pre-drill my holes before I use the thread mill. So I'll start off with doing the quarter inch holes here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select a number seven hole. That should be the pre-drill size for these quarter inch tapped holes. Now you'll notice that they are almost size on size. It's because, like I said before, these holes were made uh, to the minor diameter of the hole. I can go ahead and select all of the other quarter inch holes as well, like so. Go into my heights, uh, simply just drill the tip through the bottom so that way I can make sure that I don't have anything, the tip at the bottom of the hole there. And as always, I kind of like to finish it off just by going a tad bit further through the hole there if I have the room for it. And we'll just assume we're using a carbide drill, so we're just going to pop through this uh, block pretty easy. It's only half an inch uh, in thickness too, so it shouldn't be too bad to just drill through. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to repeat that same process over for the 5 16 and the 3 8 So again, just quickly gather a separate tool for that. I'm going to use an F drill, the pre-drill for the 5 16 holes. Same procedure, just kind of copy them all there. Set up my drill tip through the sides here and go ahead and hit OK. And one more for our 3 8 and that's going to be a O drill. I'm going to select that, select the hole, select drill the sweep through the bottom, doing my 150 and I'm going to hit OK. So there we go, I went ahead and did all of my three pre-drill holes in there. Now we can go ahead and apply the thread mill. All right, so now for my thread mill, under the 2D operations, I'm going to go with the thread option right here. And I'm going to select my tool. Now remember we talked about this just a little bit earlier. I can go ahead and use the form mill to bring in the actual tool using the DXF model provided by Harvey themselves. Or I could have also created my own thread mill using Fusion's uh, tool creation option here and put in the information myself, gone through all of the parameters to set up my cutter, and created a thread mill for it as well. So there's a couple ways to do it. I just kind of prefer to do the form mill so I can show you a different way of the generic uh, tool creation method. So I'm going to cancel out of there because we are going to use that form mill. Hit select. Now with the form mill, as you can see, just kind of gives everything set to zero here. I can go ahead and turn these on or, um, and we can go ahead and add some feeds and speeds to that. Let's go with 450 RPMs. And let's go ahead and feed per tooth, about 2,000 there or so. Uh, now, depending on the material that you're cutting, you can definitely change these uh, feeds and speeds here. For my geometry, let's go ahead and start off with just the first one here, the quarter 20. So all I'm going to do is just select the circular face there. Now, by default, Fusion will go from the top of the hole to the bottom of the hole. And that can be adjusted here on our heights tab. If we were to go maybe not fully all the way to the bottom, or if we actually wanted to go past the bottom too, we can go ahead and put in a negative offset there. So really up to you on how far you want to thread the hole. Uh, let's just assume for right now, we're going to go from the top to the bottom. In the passes tab, this is kind of where you do most of the work here. Uh, the main things that you want to kind of look out for in this simple threading operation is make sure that you have the right uh, sort of uh, direction. So I'm going to do a right-handed thread. Then we're going to go ahead and put in the pitch. And what I like to do is I like to have Fusion sometimes do the math for me. So I can actually just type in 1 divided by 20 and then it won't auto calculate and show it to me as of right now. But when it does, when I hit OK, it should take the pitch and uh, throw the decimal value in there. So what I've pretty much put in there is uh, uh, 20 threads per inch. 
pitch diameter offset. So this is kind of the main thing that a lot of people kind of get hung up on. So this is absolutely crucial if you did draw the hole to the minor diameter. In is and it's that it's what we've done here too. So I need to actually physically put in my major diameter minus my minor diameter, right? So again, I could do the math uh, and have Fusion just do it for me. So I can type in the actual nominal major diameter of the hole and I can put in my minor diameter, okay? At this point in time, we're almost ready to go. Uh, some of these other default parameters, I really don't need to mess with too much unless, for example, let's just say that we wanted to do a wear. Uh, so then that way, if we needed to make the hole bigger, just using the wear page on our controller, we could do that as well. Give us a little bit more control over the op tool. Um, we can also add some multiple passes. If we didn't want to take all of that in one pass, we could probably add a couple of stepovers. Um, so really, it's, it's, it's really up to you. Uh, we could go ahead and let's go ahead and put in maybe about 10 thou, uh, two passes there. As you can see, now we have two passes. And we can also go one step further and add a repeat pass too, just so that we can have the tool come back in there and clean up the hole, right? So there's a couple of different options and we can turn that on just so you can kind of see what that looks like. And in the linking parameters, there's really nothing much we need to do here either, unless you have a specific reason to change the uh, entry motion. So what I'm going to actually do is go ahead and hit OK. And that's all we really need to do. We have our tool, we have our tool path. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the operation looks so far. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say simulate. And now I can go ahead and hit the play button. We can see the tool come in here and then start all the way from the bottom and then work its way upwards. And because we put two step overs in there, we're taking 10 thou at a time. We should be seeing two passes and that's pretty much what it's doing. I'm going to run that through just a little bit faster so we can see the end product here. And then we also have our repeat finishing pass. So the tool comes back in there and takes a final pass and makes a cut. And that is our end product for our very first threaded hole. Now, as a hint, I do like to turn the actual model off so we can see just based off the stock what the thread actually looks like. So we're looking at a proper looking thread there. And you'll also notice we are in the negative material, which is a good sign because we actually want to cut into material because given the stock size and the drill size, we're still at the minor diameter. So this is actually what we should be looking for. And that's looking like a pretty good thread. So I can go ahead and exit out of the simulation here, turn on the model back. Now, in order to complete the rest of these, there's it's very simple. All we really need to do is I can actually go ahead and just duplicate the operation by right clicking on it. And I can edit the new one and I can select the new circular face. So that's going to be this guy right here. And the main thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we change that thread pitch. Now that we're doing a quarter 28 and not a 20, I just need to go ahead and say, well, it's an inch by 28. And the pitch diameter offset can say the same because in the end, we're still getting to the 250 just with a different pitch. So I can go ahead and hit OK. And there we go. So we have one for a quarter 20, one for a quarter 28. And just the one more, I can go ahead and do that as well which is going to be our quarter 56. So same process, just going to go ahead and select a new circular face and put in my new pitch. And that's it. If we were to take all of these and turn them on the visibility, we can actually see the change in pitch. So as you can see here, much more steeper, bigger angle, less of an angle, and this is probably the most shallow one right here, obviously because it has more threads per inch. And that's all we really need to do. 
Now we can apply the same principle to the next few holes as well. The main thing that I like to make sure is to make sure that the tool that we have can actually um, can be used in all of these different holes. Now it's really handy having that single flute cutter so that I can do multiple pitches. But how would I actually know if I can do multiple diameters? And just a quick little workflow that I personally like to use is I can go ahead and turn on that cutter. And this is why I kind of like having the cutter information as well. I can go ahead and get these diameters for my neck. So I have that at point, uh, 115. And I can also get the diameter for the actual flute, which is at 18. So just using a quick calculator here, I can go in, type in my 18 minus my 115. And I know for sure that I have about 65,000 difference uh, between the neck diameter and the major diameter from the cutter. And that's still just, that's not per side, that's just a total of value. So I know that if my parameters fall well within this, under the 65,000, I can go ahead and use that same cutter for all of these different diameters. So let's do a quick little check with our 5 16s and our 3 8s. Now with the 5 16s, I have it drilling out at 257. So let me go ahead and clear this out really quick. Uh, my nominal is going to be 3125 minus my 257. So well within the 65 thou. So we should be able to use the same cutter for our 5 16s as well. And then for our 3 8s, let's just do a quick check on that as well. So we have our nominal, which is our 3 8 minus the actual diameter of our ring here. Let's go ahead and take check on that really quick. So let me reset the selection. We have that at 314. So I can go ahead and say negative 0.314. And again, pretty close to the 65 thou. Um, it might become a little bit of an issue there. So this is just a quick, really good way of testing to even make sure if we can do it. So the 5 16s, I think we should be pretty comfortable. We're about 10 thou well under the 65 thou cutoff, but this one's getting pretty close. So again, that's kind of one way I like to check. It's still doable uh, by the numbers at least, but that's something that you might want to pay close attention to. So that's just a very quick tutorial on how we can use a single flute cutter with um, thread mill option on Fusion 360. If you guys have any uh, comments or suggestions, or if you have better ways of doing it and things that you'd like to see, go ahead and put a comment on the video below. I would like to learn a lot more of how you guys use this feature as well. Uh, and then I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.